Hello again. As you can probably see, we're in a very dark, disused railway tunnel. Outside, the weather is horrendous. It's raining, it's windy, and it's cold. Inside here, nice and calm, no wind, it's reasonably warm, and I've got the place to myself. It's like having my own personal film studio. Now, if you've been following my videos over the last year, you'll know I've done quite a few underground drain explorations and issues railway tunnels. And that involved a lot of taking photographs in dark conditions using a technique known as light painting. It produces amazing results. So I thought it would be interesting to produce a video showing the gear I use to take those photographs and also the technique I use to take a light painted photograph. So first of all, I'm gonna show you the, the camera gear I use and then we'll move on to the, uh, the torches and the lamps I use. So I'll just get the camera gear set up and we'll, we'll go through the uh, items of kit. We'll now have a look at the uh, basic photographic equipment you need to take a light painted photograph. Now quite often that's governed, governed by a few factors. One is cost. Not everybody wants to spend a fortune on camera gear. The other is try and utilise your existing equipment. That is what I do. Because the other thing is my camera gear as well as doing, say, photography in a tunnel, I use it for wild camps, I use it for train travel, and I occasionally use it for the odd pub crawl or something like that. So, your camera gear quite often has to cover a wide spectrum of activities. Now, the essential things you need, really, you need a digital single lens reflex camera. So you can put different lenses on and different attachments. The one I've got here, which I've owned for over five years now, is a Sony A37. I use it a lot for wild camping. It gets a lot of abuse. It's still going strong. I think Canon and Nikon they make entry level single lens reflex cameras, so they, they would be ideal. One thing I did buy, I did buy a couple of additional batteries. You use quite a lot of battery power up light painting, so you don't want to run out of batteries. Uh, get at least one or a couple of spares. The other important piece of kit is the lens. Now I've got a Sigma 10 big 20 wide angle lens. Again, I use it mainly for wild camping. But the 10 millimeter setting is ideal in a tunnel like this. It's wide angle will get a lot of the tunnel in and that's what you're after. So there's several other makes on the market. I bought that second hand, it just came up at my local photographic shop. Another item is the tripod. If you're doing this type of photography, you're taking long exposure, exposures, you don't want any movement. So you want a good tripod. Mine again is a carbon fiber lightweight uh, tripod bought from China, mainly bought for wild camping. I do want to be carting a heavy tripod about with me but it serves as a great tripod down here. And then the other thing, you're taking longer exposures, 90 seconds, 120 seconds are common exposures. I think most single lens reflex cameras go up to about 30 second exposure and then you've got the bulb setting. So what I bought is this little digital timer. 
I think it were only about £25. It plugs into the camera. On that, you can put whatever delay you want and whatever um, exposure setting. So I usually, I might have 10 second delay on my camera, which is standard. I put a 90 second, say, exposure on the timer, set it going, you've time to get started, and then the shutter opens. And because you're not, op not op operating it with your fingers, there's no camera shape. So all those items are sort of essential to get a good light painted photograph. We're now going to have a look at torches and lamps. One thing I should mention first, because my DSLR is the main prop and that's what I'm going to demonstrate the light painting on, I'm having to film this. It's on a, a little Sony RX100. So I apologise if there's a bit of out of focus or anything like that. I can't switch the autofocus off. So I'm hoping it will it'll work out. But like I say, we'll look at torches and lamps next. Now, railway tunnels, the big dark places, you need a powerful torch. Don't think you can come down here with a little battery operated flashlight. You won't see a thing and it might lead to problems as well. See, if you're just exploring or you like painting, you need a powerful torch. This is a panther, it's a night searcher panther. There's lots of others on the market. It's got a 1500 lumen main beam, and I can also switch it to half power. So it, it, it does give out a lot of light, but you need it. It's also got a 1200 meter beam. So you can see that it'll shine right down to the end of the tunnel and it illuminates everything nicely. So that's the sort of torch I would recommend for exploring. On full power, it'll last about two or three hours. Obviously, if I'm doing an explore, I can be down here for six hours. So I do need another torch. It won't last long enough that. I might just utilize that for the light painting part of it. So I have another torch here. This is a, it operates off D cells, rechargeable D cells. So I've got three of those in and I've got, a, I think another three in my bag. So I know I'm never going to run out of light. It's got a, a thousand lumen boost light, so you can use this for light painting. Other nice thing it's got, it's got like a telescopic focus on the beam. So that spot, again, could be used for light painting. So it, it is a good standby torch and additional torch so you you can like like spend hours down here and still do some light painting or exploring and i like the idea with the rechargeable batteries if you were down an awful long time you could bring quite a few sets of batteries and you're not going to run out of light so that's my my second torch that i'm not finished there i have other torches I have these two little spare torches. That's a very little one, but it's a good to have in my pocket all the time. And that's another sport torch I carry. I ain't putting batteries in there because it occasionally switches itself on. So I class that as like a torch for an emergency. So it's in my pocket, set of batteries with it. If I did have to use it, I can put the batteries in and I know I've got light. You may wonder, why have I got all these torches? Well, the main thing is, if you're half a mile down a tunnel, my big torch has gone flat, and I drop the other torch, I don't want to be left in a situation where I haven't got any light. So I have a couple of spares, just in case. 
Now another useful lamp is this headlamp. I, may, I use this mainly if I'm putting settings on the camera or you're altering your, changing your lens. You can switch that on and your hands are free. So this is another great torch to bring with you. So I think that sort of covers all the equipment, camera gear and torches and lamps. So now we're going to get on and demonstrate some light painting. Again, we're using the single lens reflex. So you'll see me, we'll put all the settings on and then we'll, we'll do some actual light painting. I've got my DSLR mounted back on a sturdy tripod and I've got the remote shutter release connected. I'll go through all the settings I put on the camera. I'll then try and show you a close up of those settings on the camera and then we'll come back, do the light painting and take the photograph. So, camera's on. Got my Sigma 1020 zoom lens on. I've opened it up to 10 millimeter to get as much of the tunnel in as possible. The camera I have set to manual and the autofocus, I've turned that to manual. It can't focus in the dark, it would just be in and out. So that's got to be set to non-automatic. I've manually focused the camera lens to infinity and just turned it back slightly so that will get everything in focus. I'll now go through the settings. You could do nearly with a checklist of all these settings. The white balance, because I'm using an LED torch light, I found on my camera a setting of 5,500 degrees Kelvin. So I've set the white balance to that. The ISO I've set to 100 to get as much detail as I can. The aperture, I've set that to around f8. I'm quite happy with that. Few people set it higher. You can vary that. That's one of the things you can vary an awful lot. And then the exposure, I've set that to 90 seconds. So I think that should allow me to white paint, light paint the tunnel enough. I think that covers everything, so I'll now show you a close-up of those settings. I'm just going to try and show you the settings I've put on the camera. So the ISO we've set to 100. The white balance 5500 degrees Kelvin to match the LED light. When I can see it. The aperture I've set to F8. That's not a bad starting one. We can vary it from that. And then the, the exposure, we've taken that up to bulb, so I'll be able to operate 90 seconds from the remote cable release. As you can see, the camera is in total manual mode, and as I mentioned, the autofocus is switched off. So we are ready to take a photograph now. So, we're in a position now to take this uh, photograph by light painting. Got the remote release connected. On here, I've got a 10 second delay. That'll give me a chance to get back to my camera and turn the floodlight out. I don't want it casting the shadow of the tripod onto the photograph. 
and then there's a 90 second exposure. So that's going. So I'm just going to turn the floodlight the floodlight out. Right, we're ready to start light painting. So it's a mantra moving this torchlight over all the photograph. Because a 10mm lens has got quite a bit of foreground in, make sure you get all these walls and the, the ground area in front well lit up. That brickwork, or stonework should I say, is pretty dark. Get plenty of light in it. Both sides. I keep moving about so I don't cast any shadows. Now quite often the, the roof area can be covered in soot, so we need plenty of light up there. And then the, again, that ground area is quite dark stone. Get plenty of light in there. If it was white limestone, it wouldn't need so much light. Now concentrate deeper down in the, the tunnel. I'll probably use about 45 seconds up. My time's ticking away. So more light in that uh, roof area, really deep down in the tunnel. And then that area up there. So it'll show that beautiful brickwork off. So it's, yeah, have I got everything? Have I covered every bit of the picture in front of me? So that's, I'll come round here. So the camera has now taken its photograph. It's had 90 seconds. What I'll do once it's, it's processed, it takes another 90 seconds to process the picture. Once that is processed, We'll have a look at it on the LCD screen of the camera. It will give a good impression whether the photograph has worked out or not. So this is the time when we see has the photograph worked out or not. We'll just get it up on the screen. So that's the, the first photograph we've taken. Looks a very nice picture, the, the walls and the, so the ground air is well illuminated. Looking at it, I could say deeper down the tunnel looks a bit dark. So what I would do here, I'll retake this photograph and do it at an exposure of about 120 seconds this time and try and get more light down the bottom of the tunnel. Once I've taken this image again with more light down the end of the tunnel, I'll put uh, both images up on the computer screen and we'll uh, have a look at them. You don't usually get the right picture first time off. It is a bit of trial and error. Might be two or three pictures before we get the right image. So this is the first photo I took. It's got about the right amount of light in the foreground. It's all in focus and the detail on the stonework is clear. So I'd say F8 aperture is about okay. If you look at the end of the tunnel, it's a bit dark. So as I mentioned, I'm gonna take the photograph again, this time 120 second exposure and try and get some extra light, extra torchlight down the end of the tunnel. This is the second photo then, taken 120 seconds. You can see the end of the tunnel is more clear now. I managed to get extra torchlight down there and it's a lot brighter image. I would be happy with this photo. If you look at it on the computer screen now, then you can see a little less light on the left hand side brickwork and perhaps a bit more on the right hand side stonework. And perhaps a bit more light on the sooty area on the roof near the end of the tunnel. But that would be striving 
for, for perfection after you've viewed the image on a computer screen. I usually take probably two or three photographs and then pick, pick the best one out of that. Hopefully, that will have given you the basic idea of taking a photograph using light painting techniques. A lot of it is trial and error, putting different settings on, using different amounts of torch light. Usually the first photograph you're taking is a bit of a test. Try to F8, see what it works out like. And then you can adjust that accordingly. I usually take two or three pictures before I get the perfect one. Couple of little things I've learnt. When you get back to your car, take all these settings off. The amount of times I put on my gear away, a few weeks later, gone out on a wild camp, first bit of footage, out of focus. Ah, I never took the uh, manual focus off. Or you've left, left the strange 5,500 Kelvin white balance on. So I tend to pour my settings back pretty normal when I get back to the car. And another little thing. Down here is very quiet and quite eerie at times. So the amount of times, I've done this twice today, taking a bit of footage, you want to check it on the LCD screen. So you're concentrating on this little dark screen and then suddenly you hear footsteps walking up behind you. And you think, what's that? And then you realise it's uh, your own footsteps on the camera being played back to you. Or the other time, all I could hear was this heavy breathing. And it was my heavy breathing being played back to me. Put it in, I've put the wind up me a couple of times. Hope you found this interesting. And like I say, best way, get yourself in a tunnel, get all your gear with you, have a go, see what results you'll get. You'll be astonished at the detail on a light painted photograph. So, next film, I have an idea, it might be back down here again, doing some different type of uh, photography in dark conditions. A bit of fun type photography. We'll have to see. So, thanks for watching. See you on the next one. Bye then.